Hello friends, Techman Pat here. Today we are looking at the Starlink Performance or the commercial business version. It is a massive dish. The box is just here. It's expensive at 3,750 Australian dollars for the hardware. And then <laughs> to pay monthly, it's 374 Australian dollars. This is not for the faint of heart. And this is certainly kind of hard for anybody who has a residential home to really stomach. $374 per month, that's insanity. However, if you've got a remote mine site, if you're running a business, a real business, not just one person, then again, you know, one person like an influencer up in the Wop Wops can earn that much, but I still think it's a lot per month. But if you're running a business and your business is paying for it, then this is a solution for you. But what exactly is Starlink business for, right? What's the, what's the thing that makes it better? Well, you'll find out in this video that's sponsored by Nedvolt. More about them below. Check those guys out. They service the entire Australian country with telecom communications. They can give you Starlink and a whole bunch of other solutions. So again, links below. Thank you very much for sending me this dish for review. Let's get started by rolling the intro. So Starlink business is expensive. It's expensive from the get-go and it's also obviously an ongoing expense. Why? Well, first of all, it is higher reliability for high demand users. What that really translates to is you've got priority across the system versus everybody else, especially residential, right? You're gonna get the best connection, you're gonna get priority when it's busy, and of course, you're gonna be able to connect to multiple satellites. Because with this device, not only is there a modem, there's also a power brick. So you have to have two things to power. And yes, it's a very, very powerful dish. It puts out a lot of heat, which can melt snow off the top, which is great, but it just means that it is very, very powerful to get those best connections and ping times can be as low as 50. Now I've seen 65, 60 milliseconds on average the entire time I've been using this dish and that is way better than the 100 I was getting on the residential version. Now the residential would bounce around between 70 to 100, but this one is bang on at 60, 65, and that is impressive. Okay, this is the satellite dish up on the roof and the cable is nice and long. It comes out here and then we have all this to power it. So we've got a power supply, we've got the modem and we've got the instructions right here. So we go from the dish to the power supply, which has its own obviously power cable to a power wall outlet. And then we've got the motor, which also has the same. Now, unfortunately for Australians, this dish can't hit 350 megabits a second like it can for the US. Maybe it's just availability or just the sheer size of our land over here and how far it stretches from the nodes that are located on the ground. Well, this one here can hit up to 220 megabits a second down and 25 megabits a second upload, which is actually the same as they are touting here on the website. Interestingly enough, I have seen this hit 236 megabits a second. So that 220 must be just like a on paper limit at the moment. As you can see, the sticker says 350 megabits a second, but in small writing there, it says 220 megabits a second, but it does tout 25 to 50 milliseconds in actual latency. I haven't seen it that low. It's been about 60 as mentioned before. Lastly, we're getting into the fluffy stuff. You get unlimited support and high priority support from Starlink, especially when you're setting it up well actually it's really easy so I, I don't know but if obviously there's a person that goes oh just help me set it up then go for it but it's so easy to set up it's unbelievable put it on the roof put it on the ground and off you go the more expensive things like accessories as is with the residential ver version to mount them onto the side of a building very expensive links below for the Amazon but I don't recommend it if you can get something from Bunnings or and lastly there is a managed portion to the Starlinks you can deploy multiple locations and have full control Control over it from a centralized login. That means if you've got multiple satellite offices around Australia, you can actually control it from your head office in, let's say, Perth or Sydney or Melbourne. And you know, as a business grade solution, that's perfect. Now, what about performance? 
Well, first of all, I have it connected via Wi-Fi 6. It has obviously a very good Wi-Fi system, but I don't have the adapter for Ethernet. However, I can check two things. I can check the speed that it sits on at the modem and the speed that my laptop is getting via Wi-Fi 6. So let's do a speed test. Pretty standard, it's your Okla speed test. So let's click go on that. We are connected to SpaceX Starlink. There's Launtel as our location because even though I'm in Perth, the satellites are bouncing me all the way to the east coast. There we go, 110, 120, 130, 140. Oh, that's speeding up 150 and 170. Not bad, not bad. Not close to the 220, but it could be the distance from my laptop to the actual modem. 13 up, 15 up. I'm very impressed with that. At, at the end of the day, this is a much more stable solution that I have used, especially compared to the residential. It has been averaging these kinds of numbers pretty much all the time. It doesn't drop out as much as the residential. That's what I've noticed. It is very, very, I guess, reliable. And you know, as a business, that's certainly what you need. And I'm pretty impressed. But let's have a look at the speed that Starlink itself is getting, the actual modem. So you can log into the system and you can check. And straight off the bat, let's press speed test. And generally speaking, I see this as a much higher speed than if you do a speed test. So if you are having a device like this, make sure to get the ethernet adapter so you can run your ethernet cable straight to the modem. We've hit 196, 199, are we gonna crack 200? Oh, we're not. We didn't crack 200 that time, but sometimes if you just run it again. Now I've managed to put this in a place that has no obstructions. I saw on the app, there were no obstructions. The app is always really good at telling you if there are. So make sure to get the best speeds you are moving it around. So today, it is middle of the day, there we go, we cracked 200. I have seen it to go to 236. I'll put a link and video to that. But at the end of the day, that is an impressive speed. The upload 22, 20 megabits a second, 19, 18, that's also very good. So your video calls and Zoom calls will be absolutely fine. I think generally if you have at least 10 megabits a second, those kinds of services work really, really well. And of course, any downloading, well, it's going to be pretty darn fast. Again, nearly $400 a month and $3,700 for the hardware. Very, very expensive, but extremely reliable and fast at different times of day. So what about the obvious question? Gaming, but I have found a website to test the pings. So let's have a look at that. A lot of people have asked me about CSGO, so we can click on that. So let's have a look at what CSGO gives us in pings on Starlink. 80 milliseconds for Australia, that is very, very playable. Uh, as you remember last time, the residential version was getting nearly 100 to 97. Awesome. 80, that's perfect. Let's jump into Valorant, that's another popular one, and let's start that one. Of course, the east coast of America is never going to be great. One thing to note is that when Starlink connects to the internet, it actually connects locally to a point on the ground in the country or the closest country. So right now, that's the east coast of Australia, hence a lot of these connections are going to be pinging from there. Now, I'm not sure why it's not showing an Australian server, but I'm pretty sure there are Australian servers in this one. This is the one we tested before and I got a pretty poor connection at between 95 to 100 milliseconds and there we go, 81. I did test this side compared to the game. It's pretty much bang on. And it jumped, there you go, 97. I'm still actually impressed that it's lower than 100, so maybe it'll bounce around quite a bit. Maybe it is just Warzone being Warzone, but this is absolutely playable for first person gaming. Let's jump into Apex Legends, uh, very popular. Another game that is very similar to Warzone and Oceania 82. I think they have a lot better servers in the more popular games. So I'm guessing if we went to like Fortnite, which we'll do in a second, we'll get it there. So 80 milliseconds to Sydney. And technically speaking, I'm kind of existing in the Sydney server region. Here we go, Fortnite, very popular. Lots of support from different servers, lots of services around. Let's have a look at what we get. Oceania, Sydney, again, 92. We've got, oh, Singapore, 182. That's not bad. Like, 
you can play that. That's playable for Fortnite. Like Fortnite, maybe people will get mad. But again, 87 ping, that's impressive. And as you can see, it's pretty solid. It doesn't jump around as much. It doesn't just spike crazy. You can see that it's going across every 90 seconds solidly at 81 milliseconds. Now, Rainbow Six Siege is one of the most notorious games for a good ping. Uh, when I played, I usually get about 60 to 70 on my connection. And if you're not getting one like that, it's gonna be very difficult to play. Anything below 100 is playable, but with Rainbow Six Siege, you're really looking for those all oh, those milliseconds in difference between getting killed or getting a kill. And this one seems to be bouncing around quite a bit. I'm not really sure if it's just this occurrence or just that one off, but 80 is playable, but it's definitely not competitive. Lastly, Battlefield 5, lots of players jump on, big explosions, lots of things happening. And again, it looks like AWS Sydney is getting about 85, 86 milliseconds. And that's great. I'm look I'm very happy with that it is better than the residential but it just means that you can play on a very expensive satellite connection so is Starlink business worth it for kind of anyone but a business person no absolutely not the reliability is excellent and the balance between speed and latency is pretty impressive too it's just impressive it's very impressive to test and try out but it's something I cannot recommend to any residential user unless you have potentially a big business maybe a uh, outpost or some sort of mine site that requires internet this will be perfect for it your teams will be able to access it call back to head office have your zoom calls have your meetings and this is absolutely perfect there's no justification to have this at home at all and gaming performance isn't even a good enough justification to do so because the ping difference is about 10 to 15 milliseconds in most games and of course the speed and download is very similar except this gets priority services it's more expensive, it's more expensive per month, it's certainly geared towards a specific subset of people, hence I think it's the price tag. Otherwise, if they made it too cheap, because I don't think the price tag actually resembles what the quality of service is, I think it's just to separate businesses from residential people. There's also marine version, which I'll probably never get to test. First of all, I don't have a boat, so if anybody wants to send a boat to review them, let's talk Starlink Marine. Friends, thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. The Starlink business is as is, unrecommended unless you're a business. And of course, huge thanks to NetVault for sending me this giant box. They brought it over on a plane, dropped it off to my door. Huge thanks to those guys. Links below where you can look at their services. Highly recommend it. The guys have been incredible. And what makes these guys unique with Starlink is this little box right here. This is a little Raspberry Pi, which is used to connect to your network and obviously via Ethernet port and is powered, but it is there for all the monitoring needs that a business user actually requires. Because at the end of the day, if you've got a service like this and you're not monitoring and making sure that it functions well, well, you've just kind of got a normal service that's really expensive. And NetVault will be able to do that for you. So if you want to know a little bit more about this service or other solutions, check the links below. Thank you very much for watching. I'll catch you all in another video. Bye.